Good morning, Blue Jays. We're coming to you live from the CW Stessman studio. I'm Drew Higgins. And I'm Olivia Book. It is prom week and the temperatures have been on the rise. Hannah Sanders has the report for you later in the show. We also have more information about school safety, some big news from our legendary school spirit leader, and what's going on with the special student in our art department. With that and other news updates, we'll be right back after the break. This, this is KLHS. This just in, the beloved Ethan Allen building on the historical Liberty Square has collapsed. This building was built in the 1880s and was originally three different buildings, but was combined in the 1960s. There have been no injuries reported, and we will bring you more information as it enters our newsroom. Thankfully, no one got hurt, but unfortunately, throughout this year, we have seen a lot of school shootings and tragic events across the nation. Reporters Danny Johnson, Mitchell Neth, Jackson Ogden, and Brent O'Leary bring us more on what our school does to keep us safe. In 2015, there was over 300 mass shootings in the world, which is starting to make students, communities, and citizens wonder just how safe they really are. We recently sat down with Liberty High School principal, Dr. Adams, to discuss how the events like these can affect daily routine. All of our safety and security uh, processes are put into place to uh, ensure that in the event um, that we are prepared. And as far as preventing, those are all preventative major, um, uh, measures. For example, securing the building, making sure we have more adults in the building that are security officers. Along with Dr. Adams, Officer Corum reminds us of what daily actions of hers have changes for the sake of security along with her opinion on the subject. I think police response has changed. I think, and that's been talked about nationwide, how when you look at what happened in Columbine in 1999, uh, where we used to just hold perimeters if there's a shooting in this building, I'm not waiting for anybody else to respond before I respond. These threats have imposed a bigger push for strong safety precautions, like in Liberty High School, where over 100 of these cameras are put in place to keep areas of the school safe. With KLHS, this has been Brent O'Leary, Jackson Ogden, Mitchell Neff, and Danny Johnston. Thanks, guys. I know I'm really grateful to have a school that does so much to keep us safe. Absolutely. I know the teachers are doing everything that they need to to make sure that we are always safe all the time. And on safety policies, I know we have a lot for weather, specifically tornadoes. And about tornadoes, uh, Tornado Alley is actually going to be clear this week. And here's why as we move to the screen. So recently, we've seen the redevelopment of a weather pattern called the Omega Block. Two low pressure systems are forming on the west and the east coast, and the jet stream that is created in the middle will prevent storms from moving across the country in normal patterns. This will relieve some severe weather in the Midwest, but might just take that severe weather over to the coasts. Warmer temperatures will start to heat up the southern states, and Missouri should stay average with temperatures around 70. As far as Liberty weather goes, for those of you with allergies, spring can be a worrisome time, and those worries are going to continue throughout this week. As pollen is high, but luckily not as high as those in states such as Nevada and Utah. Breathability is predicted to be good as well, so hopefully those worries won't be too great this week. And temperatures are on the rise as we move into the next week. Today we have a high of 74 and a low of 51. Friday we'll have a high of 82 and a low of 60. For the weekend, Saturday we'll have a high of 84 and a low of 60, while Sunday we'll have a high of 76 and a low of 61. Next week we'll start with fairly high temperatures, with Monday having a high of 78 and a low of 62. Tuesday we'll have a high of 78 and a low of 59. Make sure to bring your umbrellas and keep them handy as chances for thunderstorms will increase on Sunday night and Monday morning for your prom weekend. That's all I have. Back to the front desk. Thank you, Hannah. At Liberty High School, we are proud to have a top-notch fine arts department. Let's head over to reporter Erica Schmitz with more information on an award-winning artist in our very own school. I liked art in school and I liked it because um, I'm really bad at math and I'm not really good at thinking logically like that and so getting an art class was an awesome break in my day 
And so I always kind of took it just for that reason. But then this year I started taking art and it just, it became a way to like speak to people almost. And so it's definitely become a way that I love to almost vent and relax. This year was a lot of, it was a huge learning experience um, in terms of art because I'd never really painted in color before. I'd never really painted before. And so um, it was a lot of trial and error and kind of learning what my style was art-wise. And so then there was this competition for Pan Am, which is an organization. And they wanted us to um, convey a country as best we could through a painting. And I chose Haiti because I got to go to Haiti this summer. And I painted one of my friends whose name is Schneider. And um, that was really the first painting that I did that I kind of realized that I really love art. And what I love about art is being able to paint other cultures. So that was a huge part of this year. But I also finished a painting recently about an Indian girl. I haven't met her, but I love the way it came out and the colors look really cool together. And um, I just love that the way it turned out. I think a huge phrase for me is that it's not about me. That's a something that I really want to live by and I want people to know that um, first and foremost, I am living for Jesus. And then for others, I want them to know that I care about others and I want to be there for them. And then um, I just want people to know that um, being selfless and humble is a thing that everyone needs or wants to see in another person. I'm hoping that by doing art, a lot of people can kind of see more where my heart's at without having to hear it from my mouth, I guess you'd say. It's kind of a way to speak to people without using words. And so I think it's um, awesome that people can kind of know a little bit about you just by looking at something that you created. And I'm hoping that I can kind of speak to people that I've never even met through some of the paintings that I've done. Congratulations, Brenna, on your accomplishment. You still have time to take part in the LHS Thousand Thank Yous project. This is a great opportunity to thank a teacher that makes a difference in your life. As you know, the goal is to get 1,000 thank yous for our teachers. Please visit the LHS homepage or visit the link down below by the end of the school day today to submit. On Friday, April 29th, following the school day, we are providing an opportunity for students to volunteer to participate in beautification project at LHS. The plan is to stay after school and plant flowers around our building. Our goal is to make our building just as beautiful on the outside. Right after school on the 29th, we are meeting on the patio outside of the cafeteria doors. Help is needed from students and also from staff to supervise. If anyone would like to take part in making our school beautiful, please fill out the Google form in your email. The Spectator Yearbook Sales List is outside the main office and has been updated to include all sales. Please check the list before Yearbook Distribution Day on May 13th to verify your book purchase. If you have any questions, please see Ms. Johnson in room 513 or Ms. Bootka in the main office. If you did not purchase a yearbook, any extra books will be available for $75 on Yearbook Distribution Day on a first-come, first-served basis. Seniors may purchase a book beginning at noon, and underclassmen extra sales do not begin until they are dismissed for the afternoon signing time. Graduation is coming up, and I know all the seniors are counting down the days. We hope you all are enjoying, enjoying your final days of high school. There are lots of fun and exciting activities coming up in the next few weeks. The annual Senior Breakfast will be held on May 13th at Pleasant Valley Baptist Church. The breakfast will open at 6.30 a.m. and will lead right up to commencement practice, which starts at 8 a.m. The breakfast is an optional event and a reservation is required to attend. Commencement practice is required in order to walk in the ceremony on Sunday. Senior Breakfast reservations will be taken at lunch next week. The cost is $5.00. Senior Superlative Awards will be given out at the breakfast. These awards are a common high school tradition. Click on the link in your email to cast your vote and determine which of your classmates will be honored this year. With all of this talk about senior year, let's check in with Taylor Barfetti as she talks to Ethan O'Hare about handing over his reign as spirit leader. Thanks guys, I'm Taylor Barfredi and I'm here with Ethan O'Hare who is the spirit leader of our student section here at Liberty High School. Ethan, can you tell me a little bit about what it's like to be a spirit leader? 
Um, so being spirit leader, you pretty much are just the leader of the student section at all the athletic events. And so I try to pump up the crowd as much as I can, just enjoy the, enjoy all the athletic games, enjoy, have fun with it. And that's pretty much it. Okay, what was your favorite game memory this year? Um, one of my favorite memories that I've had here would have been the court ring basketball game that we had this year. And that was whenever we had Daniel and Jessica win court ring king and queen. And it was just a really good experience to see you Thank you, Taylor. Speaking of seniors handing over the title, it is your final chance to let your favorite senior know how much they mean to you. You have a chance to kiss them goodbye by purchasing Hershey Kisses and writing them a note at lunch this week. You can buy one for 25 cents or five for a dollar. And seniors, student council needs your help. The senior slideshow that will be played at the senior breakfast in May will feature pictures that we need you to submit. There was a Facebook page created called the LHS Senior Slideshow that you can post your pictures in, or you can email them to Morgan Fleming. Please make sure pictures are appropriate. We are looking for pictures of you and your fellow senior friends involved in school activities. The final day to send in your pictures is this Friday. This week's student council will be selling prom tickets during lunch. They are $30 a person. Each ticket comes with a shirt and sizes are first come first serve. But staying on the topic of prom, the top 10 king and queen court was announced yesterday. Congratulations to all of those who were nominated. The athletic department will be hosting a signing ceremony for any athlete who has received an athletic scholarship to participate at the collegiate level on May 10, 2016. The ceremony will take place in the field house starting at 3.30 p.m. If you plan to participate, please see Mrs. Middleton in the athletic office. But now let's head over to Morgan Fleming with sports. Thank you, Drew. It's been a great week of Blue Jay athletics. Our spring sports are in full action and well into conference play. This week, some of our senior athletes celebrated their fantastic careers here at LHS on their senior nights. It all kicked off Monday night at the Lady Jays soccer night. Many students came out to celebrate the seniors at a tailgate with barbecue and Sheridan's frozen custard. The ladies ended up taking a tough loss 3-0 to zero to Lisa West, but looked to bounce back tonight at Park Hill. The boys' tennis team had an away conference matchup at Truman last night, defeating the Patriots 9-0. to zero. Districts start tonight at Clayview Country Club at 4 o'clock, so make sure to cheer them on. The boys' baseball team also celebrated senior night last night with the biggest group of seniors this program has ever seen. 14 senior boys were recognized last night, and fittingly, they scored 14 runs to overcome their four-game losing streak. Trent Green threw a shutout in the Jays' run-ruled Park Hill 14-0 in the fifth inning. They look to continue on Friday against Truman. And finally, capping off our sports recap, our men's golf team took home second place at the Class 4 District 8 Championships on Monday. The team of Sam Parrott, David Dobler, Life Yeterstad, Tanner Swenson, and Jake Herman shot a team total of 344 and advanced to sectionals this weekend. In studio today, we have the individual winner of the district championships, our very own Blue Jay, Sam Parrott, who shot a 71. Let's throw it over to Craig and Sam to hear more about Monday's exciting victory. What's up, Jays? Craig Straws here with Sam Parrott. Sam, could you give me a brief recap of your golf season? Yeah, um, had a good season. I won uh, three tournaments. I went 5-0 uh, and oh in matches. Um, had a really good season so far and hope to keep it going in sectionals in state. Well, good deal. Could you describe your team's performance in districts? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we played well for the most part. Um, a couple elevated scores on the low end, but uh, um, life, life coming in with 92, Digger 84, my 71, and uh, Tanner's 97, uh, pushed us two ahead to take the second spot and to move on as a team. All right, well, good deal. What's up next for you guys? We have sectionals Monday. That's the state qualifier. So uh, the top two teams and the top 15 individuals will move on. And uh, hopefully we can uh, advance as a team to uh, state. That's the goal. All right. Well, best of luck to you and the rest of the golf team. That's all I have for you today. Back to Morgan. Thanks, guys. And good luck, Sam, with the rest of your season. That's all I have today. We'll be back here tomorrow with more scores and sports news. Back to the front desk. Thank you, Morgan. But that wraps up the show for today. But before we leave you, please stand with us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For Drew Higgins, Morgan Filming, Hannah Sanders, Taylor Barfreddy, Craig Strauss, and all of our production crew, I'm Olivia Book. Thanks for tuning in today, and be sure to tune in tomorrow for a chance to perform at Arrowhead Stadium. We'll be back here tomorrow, Jays.